das lassen Sie mich gefallen. Gropius auf Sendung. I looked into a deep dark hole, even in Everson, to fall him into life, my life. Fear was my fellow, because I did not know what the ground was holding for me. Yet I had to embark upon the darkness, as the only way to make me stronger, to follow my path. The only way to stay alive. These words I won't read in a horror story, whatever. They gave me courage. My name is Rebecca, Rebecca Chambers. And I don't know how to wake from this nightmare I am in. It all began in the summer of 1998. I had just turned 18 and finished college. Due to my awards in chemistry and medicine, the police special unit stars recruited me as an officer for the medical service. Things were really going well. Upon entering into service in Raccoon City, I was assigned to the Stars Bravo team under team captain Enrico Marini. He was supposed to guide my training this never happened. June the 23rd, 1998 changed all. A cruel series of murder shocked the residents of Raccoon City and we, the stars, were supposed to support the RPD, Raccoon Police Department. Our team received the order to follow a trace in the forest of Raccoon. So we made a move and what was supposed to be a routine job turned into something that no training can prepare you for. Our helicopter made its circles over the nightly woods as something exploded. What's the matter? Enrico shouted at our pilot Kevin Dooley. His answer was, the drive train turned off. I'll have to make a forced landing. Hold on. The chopper throttled, rotating like a screw into the fast approaching woods. The rotor cut and diced the trees. The window next to me shattered, and the mighty shake of the impact made me lose consciousness for a moment. Thank God, Dooley had managed to bring us down safely. I was stuttering when leaving the wreck, but some seconds later it was okay. Enrico ordered us to spread out and to secure the area. This was my first real mission and I went alone through the dark woods. I was glad, the thunderstorm had finished for a while and there was fog between the bushes and trees. The wind slapped at the branches and hold. I heard the singing of some crickets. These scary noises made an impact on me, creeping up my arms and causing my body to shiver all over. I 
I was holding my Beretta and my flashlight in one direction as I had learned. I only found bizarrely shaped pictures created by my imagination. Under my feet, branches snapped and something seemed to startle. There was a rustle in the underwood and something flapped away. I heard a crow in the distance. I frightened a crow? My heart was beating so loud. Everyone around me must have heard it. I don't know if I was too deep into the woods or if I simply lost orientation. I could not see any members of my team. Enrico, can you hear me? I asked into my mobile radio, but the only answer was an atmospheric noise. Richard? Forrest? Anybody? Can anybody hear me? Shit. The radio seems to be damaged after the crash. I was all alone. What now? The Spencer property is a good place to collect yourself and to wait for help. These words from Enrico to Richard came into my mind. We had crossed the old property shortly before we crashed. I decided to go there. After some 20 minutes, I got sight of the outlines of the Spencer property. Fortunately, the moonlight helped me find my way through the darkness. In front of me, a flat red brick house without windows appeared, and to the right, the main building. It looked like I had to pass the red brick house to reach the property. My hopes rose, as I noticed light behind some of the windows and some slowly moving shadows. A dog was holding in the distance. To get a feeling of safety, my hand held tight the butt of the Beretta. The rusty metal door only stuck partly in the lower door hinge and I had to move over it to get inside. A penetrating smell came from within. It smelled like a combination of faces, piss and rot. It was overpowering and it really made me sick. The light of my flashlight cut into the darkness and the moisture within gave an unearthly glaze. I found myself in a big dog run, I thought. There were cells with bars on the right and left sides and in the middle a corridor leading to the door at the end. The doors of the cells were opened or ripped out. It looked like a prison. The bars were rusty or twisted. What was this? There was some sticky stuff on the bars. I stepped through the puddles on the floor. The rain had found its way through the leaking roof and you could hear scattered raindrops here and there. I took some of the stuff from a bar, maybe as big as a leaf, and checked it. It was dried full cake with blood. I didn't want to think about it, but they must have tortured some dogs. Awful. I checked the whole place with my flashlight. Something in the last cell on the right side caught my attention. I went near with my weapon in the ready. Human outlines? Someone's squatting? Some weak movements and then the light showed the pure horror. I realized where the smell came from. A dead man was sitting on the floor in the cell. He was wearing a rotten work coat which must have been white long ago. The movement belonged to cockroaches all over his body. I got sick and vomited. I wiped my face and checked the rotten body with bleary eyes and a pinched face. Looked like animals had eaten whole parts of his flesh. The pure guy had been dead for quite a while. It must have been one more victim of the raccoon killer. Then I noticed something hiding behind the door. Moonlight shone through the only window on the blood smeared operating table. Bloody surgical instruments were still situated there. The cupboards on the wall were wide open and their contents scattered on the floor. 
One more door on the right side and a clipboard on the floor. What is this? An operative report, but the paper is not complete and I can hardly read it. Um, Ella Corporation. The animal test object showed imaginate forces. Biting its leather chains in two and attacking Dr. Corbin, even in... Um, now something is missing. Um, still vital functions. Loss of parts of the body. Um, hardly any damage. Bite can transfer tea. Um, uncontrollable so far. Signed by Dr. Burke. Uh, this might be the origin of the raccoon killer. It must be about illegal experiments and scary breeding with combat dogs. Maybe they have freed themselves. Someone did this. The poor guy in the cell surely was the first victim. I must tell Enrico. I'm checking the radio again. White splashing. Probably began the rain through the roof. Enrico? Rebecca here. Can you hear me? Oh, fuck. Only random noise. Some shoveling behind me and a deep moaning came to my ears. I spun around, flashlight and Beretta ready. Don't move! I shouted with a shaky voice, but I could not believe my eyes. The dead man from the cell was standing right in front of me. Cockroaches still crawling all over him. Even through this mouth and moaning came from. This is not true. You cannot be alive. Don't come closer. One more and I will shoot. Stepping back, I shot three times into his chest. Parts of the torso exploded and the undead fell down to his knees. To my horror, he rose again, turned his head to the side and outstretched his arms. Sorry, but I want you. I should move on. Hope I don't find your colleagues behind the next door. The adrenaline was flowing and there was no place for fear inside of me. Even the terror just began. The next room was a little office with a door leading outside. No one in there. The desk lamp was shining dimly. Some potted blue plants and an old black typewriter without ribbon sat on the table and a map of the Spencer property hung on the wall. I took the map and according to it, I was located in the kennel housing for the watchdogs. Some yards further, I expected the commission housings and thought it would be easier to reach the main building from here. I opened the door and went outside. Dogs were howling again in the distance and I did not want to meet them. Let's move, again through the darkness. Again I thought about the horror story. A dark hole in front of me. The only way to salvation, but also I fear, to the next nightmare. Resident Evil Tenebrae, a radio play from Antenne Kropios, after the hit video game series Resident Evil from Capcom. Frauke Kestner spoke Rebecca Chambers, based on a short story by Sascha Leupold. Translation by Michael Kestner, cut and directed by Hartmut Breuer. Thanks for sound and music to freesound.org, Kevin McLeod in Competech, Scott Buckley from scottbuckley.tk with agreement from Capcom. This is a non-commercial radio play and free for download. 
It is licensed under creativecommons.org. More infos at www.antenne-gropius.square7.ch Thanks for listening.